Good afternoon, new audience. My PhD topic is about the biological effects of materials and prosthetic design on the perineum issues. I am Peter Taiti, I'm from the Department of Prosthodontics, and the vision of mine is getting as precise as possible in implant rehabilitation um, to provide the best treatments for our patients, and for that, I would like to implement a fully digital workflow in every aspect of implant uh, prosthodontics. Originally, I had uh, two uh, topics. Unfortunately, one of my topics just recently had been published, so I will uh, present you another topic which I uh, just started uh, last week. So my first topic is about the comparison of uh, two types of restoration materials, monolithic zirconia and metal ceramics. When we're talking about dental restoration materials, we know that um, for many, many years now, metal ceramics had been considered the golden standard because of their excellent survival rate. And as digital dentistry and CAT CAM technology uh, improved over time, uh, zirconium oxide uh, as a dental restoration material showed up in the market. Now, um, both of these types of restorations uh, need some kind of veneering ceramics. And the biggest problem with these kind of ceramics is that they have a relatively high chipping rate as a technical complication. And also, um, they have um, worse um, or less effective biological effects. Now, monolithic zirconia without the veneering ceramics are, has several advantages. Their biological effects are really favorable because they have low plaque accumulation rate and bleeding index, and they have also positive effect of cell adhesion. Since they have no veneering ceramics, they will not uh, chip, and they have also uh, promising aesthetic outcomes, and because of the ability for CAT CAM processing, they have high accuracy and time efficiency as well. Considering all of these great uh, results and um, effects of zirconia, I would like to investigate the potential benefits of using monolithic zirconia compared with metal ceramics. So our question is how monolithic zirconia single crowns perform in clinical outcomes when compared with uh, metal ceramics ones. Uh, so the intervention and comparator are the two materials and for the outcomes uh, we are investigating um, heart tissue and soft tissue parameters, also uh, technical complication and survival rates. Our hypothesis is that monolithic zirconia restorations can be a valid alternative to metal ceramic ones. This is my search in the following uh, databases and after the selection uh, we've got four eligible uh, RCT articles. <coughs> These results show us that, um, however, there is no statistical significance between the two groups. Um, there are some benefits uh, of the monolithic group uh, in terms of uh, bone loss, bleeding on probing, and the chipping. Um, this shows us that, that the hypothesis of ours was uh, true, that this uh, monolithic zirconia could be a really good alternative restoration material and it really uh, depends on the dentist uh, which type of material um, he or she would like to choose for the patient. Uh, this is my progress. Uh, I'm currently at the manuscript writing. For my second topic, we would like to investigate the different uh, placement levels of implants and their influence of the peri-implant issues. First, uh, I would like to emphasize the importance of the bone around uh, the implants because it not only gives stability for the implant, but for the soft issues as well. Thus, uh, it plays a high, high role in the pink aesthetics and therefore patient satisfaction. Uh, studies have shown that when muc mucosa is two millimeters or less, there will be an unavoidable bone resorption around the implants. This could lead to recession, attachment loss, poor aesthetics, and finally, uh, the loss of the stability. Now, why is there even a bone resorption, we could ask. Um, after the insertion of the implant, um, mucosa has to attach to the implant, and this attachment needs a specific space. Um, 
for that, a bone resorption will occur. Um, the question is how could we minimize this bone resorption? Um, by increasing the mucosal tissue thickness. One method for that is the soft tissue augmentation, but in this study we are focusing on the level of implant placement because uh, placing the implant subcrestally means that we will have uh, more space vertically uh, for the tissue. But there are some controversy among the studies, so our aim is to investigate the influence um, of different implant placement levels on the peri-implant tissues. To what extent does the level of implant placement influence crestal bone stability is our question. The, um, the I and C would be the different placement levels and for the outcomes we would investigate uh, hard and soft tissue parameters. Our hypothesis is that subcrestal implant placement may reduce marginal bone resorption. If our hypothesis is true, this would mean, um, this would determine the best placement level, first of all, also preserving more bone and would result in more stable tissues and higher patient satisfaction. This is our systematic search so far and I am at the selection my main aim is to finish my first, um, first project by January and um, also a near future um, aim of ours is to uh, start a clinical trial regarding different um, soft tissue graft materials. At the beginning of our program, I could really relate to this uh, quote, if we knew what we were doing, it wouldn't be called research by Albert Einstein. Thank you for your attention. Okay, so I have a question. Uh, you said that um, monolithic zirconia seem to be better. However, results, statistical results uh, do not uh, exactly show uh, significant differences. Uh, based on your results, uh, well, first of all, what could be the reason for this? And uh, based on your results, what would you recommend for the clinicians? Our limitations, uh, the small number of studies, this resulted in uh, some heterogeneity. That's why I think um, there is no significant difference. We need more studies in this field, uh, of course. Um, and regarding uh, chipping, there was only one case um, of monolithic zirconia chipping and this was only because uh, the patient was a Bruxis patient, uh, so this is also a problem. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you.